Good morning, this is TCR, TroyCommunityRadio.com. I'm Clint Myers on 1071 WTJN for David Denoyer on TCTV. Time now for Community Connection with the Miami County Park District. And with us this morning is Scott Myers and Amanda Smith. Welcome to the show. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, warm temperatures out there. Yeah, this week was, a, you know, it was a, this week was Echo Explorers. This past week was Water Week. At, and uh, so they got to good, go to the mud good pit. Week. So yeah, they were sliding in the mud pit. They were fighting over getting in there. I, well, I was going to say, is it, it's a mud pit versus like a waterway now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, just not much. Well, the, you know, the river is like at an all-time yeah, low right now, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, I know. It, right. Don't jinx it because sometimes, well, because it, you know, right after that, know it. yeah. But uh, you know, it, it was so funny because they when they do water week and they do the mud pit, they dig a big hole. Okay. And pull the dirt back, and then you know they fill it with water. Well. It, you know, it started on Monday. It, <coughs> excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Everything it, it started. <laughs> yeah, it started on Monday. Well, I think they had to start putting the hoses and start filling it on Saturday and run it just to get enough water in there because when they put the water in, it just went, it just sucked yeah. in. The <laughs> ground's like a sponge right now. Yes, it is. Yes, uh, it is so. While even though on the top surface of the ground is pretty baked hard, yeah, and that's why they say uh, a hard rain right now would mm. would be more apt to cause the flash flood right. because it doesn't. Right off. It, yeah, it can't absorb in right, real quick. Right. Yeah. Uh, this month is the Asian Longhorn Beetle Awareness Month for yes. the month of August, yep. and this is our new bad beetle. Yes, this is our new bad bad beetle. After the, uh, uh, you know, we've always, you know, we had the Dutch elm disease back years ago. Yep. We got rid of all the elms. Now the emerald ash borer, all the ashes are going away. Well, this is the next one. This is the Asian Longhorn Beetle, and uh, it's a large bullet shaped about an inch, inch and a half long, um, shiny black body, white spots, and really long antenna. Hmm. Um, and, you know, so far it's been found in Claremont County down in southern Ohio. Okay. So we're trying to keep it down there. Um, and so these go after basically any hardwood tree. Oh, oh any tree. Any they're, tree. They're not just focused they're, on... Yeah, their favorite is the maple. Okay. That's their priority, but they'll go on anything. Yeah, they don't we don't want you know, we don't want them in the maple trees either because no. we need our maple syrup. We know how much you love maple syrup. Oh, That's it right. is absolutely delicious. Yes, it is. So uh, they sound like they're easily identifiable. Yes, yes. And the long antennae actually have alternate between white and black bands. If they weren't so destructive, they'd be pretty. Yeah. You know. So, but yes, this month um, they're trying to raise awareness. Take ten minutes. Go outside. Check your trees for holes for any kind of signs of the beetle being present, and um, you can find all of those on ODNR's website, or you can go to OSU Extension Office website. Um, they basically will tell you the signs to look for. Okay. And one of the things you can do to help prevent it is, A, check your trees um, during the late summer and early fall. I mean, you know, once a month it would be helpful. And the firewood is one of the big ways. It's don't, like, not moving it. Don't right. move it. I mean, if you're not an expert, mm -hmm. just err on the side of caution right. and prime use example. Local wood. You know, when the emerald ash borer first came to Miami County, it was first sighted at the rest stop on I-75. Ah, uh, coming in on being traveled in on you know on a truck trucks. with oh, yeah. gotcha. So yeah, so don't don't move firewood. And uh, once they're in the tree, that's pretty much the end of the tree. Exactly, yeah. and the way they contain them or eliminate them is to remove all the surrounding trees. Oh. So in a way, they're you know they're at least you can get rid of them if you find them. Emerald ash borer, there's really not a lot you can do. So this beetle, in a way, if everyone is aware and looking for them, we can stop them by removing the trees that surround the area and you know keep them from spreading. So that's why the check is so important for them. It's it's not a flying beetle. This is no. one that's just right. going essentially right. walking from yeah. one tree to the next. <laughs> that's right. And yeah. whether it be through the top of the tree and the branches right. where it touches other right. trees. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's what's going on and that's what they did down in Claremont County is that they have quarantined it and they've so far they've kept it down within down that area. Oh, oops, I, I can't wanna... knock on your table. <laughs> too much noise on the mic. Um, uh, so, okay. But ODNR and, and OSU Extension's websites there's a lot more information on the, the Asian longhorn. You can go up and you know, you'll go on those sites and look and, and find out more information. Yeah, about what so. they look like. 
We should make a 10 most wanted poster. Yeah. Emerald um, Ashbor. Yeah, that's right. Asian Longhorn. Sounds like a good idea. Yeah. Let's do that. You could have that up on your Facebook page. Honeysuckle. I'm going to talk to Janine when she gets back. Honeysuckle. See, yeah, honeysuckle, Tree of Heaven. Yeah. Have the that's garlic right. mustard. Garlic. Good idea. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Uh, <laughs> now, starting on Monday, it's Lights Out Ohio. That's right. And that's another initiative to help protect the migrating birds. August, about mid-August through mid-October, birds are mi migrating. That's their heavy migration period during the fall. And they have one in the spring. So what, what's interesting, and I think we talked about it last week, is that we lose, what, 550 million birds per year wow. due to collisions with windows and also being disoriented and flying in circles until they just drop out of the sky. I was gonna say, you'd almost think that the light would help, but instead it's a distraction yeah. and they fly towards it. Right. Yeah. Right. And then sometimes they'll get like if there's like a, a light going up in the air, they'll end up going around it. Wow. And just circling it because mm -hmm. that's the way they're oriented that they use that. So they do. So between midnight and dawn, um, August fifteenth through October thirty first, turn off any exterior decorative lighting. Um, dim lobby and atrium lighting if you own a business or have a building like that. Turn off the interior lights or draw your blinds, and especially on the upper floor. Yes. So those are the pretty simple things. It can lower your mm -hmm. electric bill and it can help the birds safely migrate. All right. If there's someone wants some more information on on that? Mm -hmm. OhioLightsOut.org. Okay. So, and it'll happen again in the spring. All right. Yeah, that's right. So and we'll just when they're migrating <laughs> during that time. Right. That's right. Yep. All right. Got kids going back to school soon, yeah, and right. uh, yeah. you were just talking about the echo spores. Yeah. And Wednesday's paper, Tony Weber had an awesome picture of the kid going into the mud. <laughs> that's the mud right. So that was that was pretty cool. So, um, yeah, you know, it's uh, we're getting towards the end of summer, so hopefully, you know, kids are enjoying those last few days of being outside during the week and and. Uh, um, you know, it was a great Echo Explorers program this summer. We had five weeks and they were all full. Um, next summer, look for the postcard in uh, the last week of April. We'll be ready to sign up. First business day of May is when we start to sign ups for, for Echo Explorers because they fill up. We have waiting lists. Um, so we want to make sure that we get uh, folks to understand that they want to get signed up quick if they want to be in the program. That's right. So. And we'll remind people yep. oh, come yeah. April. So. They come March and April and May. Yeah, you're going to get tired of it. Probably. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> now, with the kids going back to school, uh, you still need to encourage them uh, to spend time outside. And I think once they're in the classroom, they're kind of happy to be outside. So. Uh, yes, so. they are, uh, especially if they are with no air conditioning at Troy High School. <laughs> yeah. um, I know my daughter's pretty happy to be outside. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, you know, when they come home from school, maybe that would be a good time after being inside all day. Get outside for a little while, let them play they, before, you know, and then, you know, Decompress. That's right. Just, just get their, let their minds wander. That's right. You know, um, if you've started the habit in the summer, it's best to just continue it. So hopefully, people have been yep. getting the kids outside all summer. And I have a friend who says, as soon as they get off the bus, they know they have to put their book bag down on the front stoop unless, it, even if it's raining, sometimes they'll take the book bag in, and it's like, don't come in for 20 minutes. And then yeah. when they come in, they're refreshed and See, we came ready. in and had to get our homework done and then get out of the house. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever yeah. works for your Whatever family, works. as That's long right. as you're getting them outside, yeah. at least at least 20 minutes a day, if not more. So 20, right. mi 20 minutes is enough to show improvements in, you know, focus and help relieve Reducing, stress. And, yeah. and not only does that work for kids, that works for adults, too. That's right. That's right. That's right. So... It's beneficial to get outside and get That's that outside nice thing, time. You know what's the nice thing about working in parks is that, you know, if I get a little stress and anxiety because of staff, <laughs> I, can, I, I can just go out, go out the door and take a nice walk down the trail. I'm pretty good shape. So there you go. Yeah. Pretty fortunate. That's uh, and while you're out there, you can check out the Prairie, prairie Blooms because yes. uh, they're in bloom. Yes. Black-eyed Susans, coneflowers yeah. popping out. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's a great time of year for all that stuff. You know, the... You know, you'll get all the color of the, the wildflowers that'll start blooming right now that'll lead into, uh, unfortunately, the fall color of trees, That's which is beautiful, yeah. but then that leads into, you know, further. Uh, but, other things that yeah. are Seasons that should months not down be the road. Named, <laughs> yeah. 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 Very much so. But, uh, yeah, I love the uh, wildflowers in Ohio. We just have some of the most beautiful yeah. sceneries that there are. Yeah. We yeah. really do. Yeah, that's and right. Let's see, Hobart right here, short walk from most of the places in downtown Troy. We also have Honey Creek, which is a lesser 
um, visited Park, but they have a great prairie yeah. there. Um, Stillwater Prairie, gorgeous. And then we also have Gerbery has a small prairie around our Flanagan area, which yeah. is really nice. And Charleston great. Falls. Definitely yeah. Charleston, yeah. So. So, yeah, yeah, so go look there. for those colors. And you've got uh, some events, uh, whether it be trail or one of the upcoming programs as well. That's right. We have preschool in the park on August 13th. This month it's called Creaking. So That's as hot as it's been, it'll yeah. be a nice program um, from 11 to 12 at Charleston Falls. And um, naturalist uh, Jody Gecko. Um, goes out, they play in the shallow end of the creek, and they discover what's in there and learn about it. And anytime you introduce kids and splashing opportunities, I think they're really happy. So, <laughs> That's right. Um, yeah, little story time, short size, top size hike, sometimes activities. So head out to that. Um, VIPs, we just saw Charlie yeah. Cam in the parking lot. This sounds so good yes. with the Dutch oven. Yeah, yep, cast iron cooking with the VIPs, our volunteers in parks, and. Uh, um, this is from 6 to 9, Stillwater Prairie, uh, August 13th. And uh, so they'll teach the secrets of cast iron cooking, and afterwards they'll sit around the campfire and sample That's right. delicious cuisine. So it'll be a great opportunity to have some recipes and things for folks. Well, I was Good stuff. Updating that recipe, they, they hand out a cookbook if you're interested in it. Ooh. And I had to add three or four recipes, and I started, you know, it was really distracting. Yeah. So Lori here from the station is a big camper, and she says, is well, she? We were talking about it, and I said, uh, or she told me that she has a Dutch oven, but mm -hmm. she doesn't know what to cook in it. So I said, well, you got to get out to that program. That's right. Oh, perfect. Can't tell yeah. her. All right. Can't tell her. you got a trail run challenge. Yes. Tomorrow, August 14th, 9 a.m., Stillwater Prairie Reserve. Registration begins at 8, and uh, the registration, uh, uh, you know, for online, obviously, is over. The day of registration now that you can start, it's uh, $25. Um, and then this is the fourth of five. There'll be one yeah, more coming, um, so they can go to AllianceRunning.com if they want to, to sign up for the one at, I think that's at Charleston, Charleston Falls, yeah. They've the in September. Most people are working up to the Charleston Falls race because yeah, there's some nice elevation changes there. <laughs> that's the hardest. I, I was going to say, that's the tougher one of, yeah. of all, all of them. them yes. I was trying to position it to where it wasn't quite so yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's still elevation about like Colorado, changes, let's yeah. face it. I mean, right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. It's just a, and, it, and it isn't like a run. The, no, the, you're, not, you're not racing against other people. No. You're, you're racing against yourself. You're that's looking right. for an overall improvement over the course of the summer. That's yeah. right. And the Miami... Um, county health, public health, sorry about that, was a mouthful. Um, they're always out at the races. They do um, height, weight, blood pressure optional, and they calculate your BMI. So even if you're just starting this time, you can still have time to track um, your training and you know nutrition improvements that you make from one race to the next. So, okay. So walkers, runners, you know, some people, we have people come in at 18, 19 minutes. So if you're competitive, you go to the front of the line and yeah. you compete, and if you're just out there to improve health, then you yep. walk it, do however you just can. Nice so. stroll in the woods. That's right. Nice stroll in the woods. It sounds yep. good. Yes, it um, is. You get me to the finish line if you had s'mores. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is a health. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Huh. I was trying to think of how you could make that healthy, but then you probably no, no, no. you can. No, I don't think you, so. You took I, out the chocolate, the marshmallows, and the graham crackers. And there then you go. and then, then walk, take a picture and then do the whole challenge again. That's right. <laughs> there you go. There you go. If it's okay, we'd like to thank the sponsors. Oh, absolutely. All right, and um, up and running, always a great partner. Premier Health, which is Upper Valley Medical Center. We have Miami County Public Health, who does all of our health assessments. Marsh McClellan Agency and A Plus Tutoring, and we also have Abbey Credit Union. So they've been phenomenal. Um, Great folks so over at Abbey Credit Union. Oh, they right. are. They are wonderful. So yep. thank you to them for making this possible. Because tell you what, they've many of these sponsors have been there for the. This is our fifth year doing it, and races like we've talked about before. The average has gone from 35 the first year to. 200 plus now. that's amazing yeah that is so great to have that uh, amount of participation right and to have it grow uh, do you look forward to grow more into next year I, I, as <laughs> long as the experience can remain right. 
okay. you know, nice gotcha. for people and you not know, Because parks can only handle so much. Yeah. Right. You know, they can only handle so, handle so many people. So, right. yeah. Um, and we got room to grow. And it's, it's, and it's got people out moving. That's, that's, that right. is the key. That's Absolutely. what's important. It, it, it's getting grow, it grows more every year. So it'll right. be a little bit more next year. Perfect. Um, what else do you have coming yeah, up? Tuesday the 16th is, again, that preschool in the park creaking we talked about uh, earlier with Gecko Jody. And that's at Charleston Falls Preserve, 11 to 12. Uh, August 20th is a uh, canoe float, 9 a.m. Um, they'll meet at Treasure Island and go up to the canoe launch where they'll uh, take a leisurely float back or a leisurely walk back, maybe, if the river doesn't rise a little bit um, by then. But it probably will by then. And back to Treasure Island. Uh, and, and this is a, a unique partnership. We've always done canoe programs with the city of Troy, but this one's actually with U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Oh, I gotcha. Um, and so they'll be on site with various stops along the river to, and, and uh, to teach some participants about the Great Miami River. And it includes a fish shocking demo. And what is a fish shocking demo? A fish shocking demo is a painless uh, demonstration for fish. What they'll do is they'll actually shock the river. Okay. So the fish will be stunned. They will float to the top. And you will be able to see which fish are in the river. Kind of how healthy they to, are. I was going to say to take a count. Exactly. Kind of that's, what, that's what they do them for is to do counts and do inventory, you know, to see what, okay. what varieties of fish and things are in certain bodies of water. And so they will do a demonstration of that. Um, you know, and so they'll, one of the other stops they'll make is um, uh, the park district recently uh, or in the process of purchasing is seeing um, 40 acres from the city of Troy as part of the Duke Park yes. project. And uh, uh, they're planning on stopping at that place there the, uh, at the at the park district purchased and uh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife is going to stop and, and sort of talk about um, trees and some conservation practices things that are going to go on there. I was, and that's what you're planning on doing with it is yeah. turning it back kind of to nature. Correct right. exactly it's a floodplain we're going to lay it leave it be a floodplain reforest it um, okay. and allow it to nature to sort of take its course with it. So yeah. we just yep. Planted what almost 800 trees yeah, was it? Bunch. Yeah, it was that was a, a couple months ago, yeah. several yeah, months back. Yeah, Fish and Wildlife helped us with that. So great. Yeah, so yeah. that's pretty awesome. You've um, got a, a gardening series. Yeah, Intro to Gardening. Yeah, Intro to Gardening, August 20th, from 2 to 3:30 at Lost Creek Reserve. Um, that same day, from 1:30 to 3, is our Family Discovery Hike Flowers at Charleston Falls. So, hey, if you want to be in gardening. Uh, come out and uh, with with uh, I don't know, I'm not sure who's doing that one. Whether that's Marion or yeah, yeah Marion. So Marion's going to do her intro to gardening, so folks can learn how to going into next spring, they learn what they want to do for gardening for next year. So okay, she right. provide great opportunities there, and then uh, the family discovery hike. Obviously, flowers. You'll get to see all the flowering uh, things going on at Charleston Falls, and then on Sunday the 21st. Our dog social. Dog, dog social. social's very popular. Yes, yeah. hero dogs. This is a really cool, um, you know, you hear about the search and rescue dogs. Mm -hmm. They're actually going to be on site, the Buckeye search oh. and rescue dogs. So you'll learn what important job they perform, and then your dog can get some good tips. So next time you lose your n newspaper, or they can search. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, but it's, it is really amazing to see what these dogs are capable of. So this is, this is one of my top three dog socials. I love the working yeah. dogs when they have the, the, the sheep, sheep herding. Dogs. I love when the frisbee dogs, the flying canines come out. And then this is also one right up there with yep. those. So stop out, even if you don't have a dog, it's really interesting. Right. And these dogs perform a really cool really right. wonderful job yeah. so that's yeah one to three august 21st still water prairie yeah so. it's still water and then that same day right after that from three to five is uh our st storybook trail fairy houses and it's also at still water from three to five so you can come out see the hero dogs and then do the uh the storybook trail with fairy houses that's right and all of these programs plus the rest for the um, remaining part of August, are on our website. So we kind of do the highlights, but there's other important information. Other activities going oh, yeah. on yes. and uh, information Stuff out there all for the you. Time. So they can go to our website, miamicountyparks.com, and mm -hmm. they want to register for a program. Uh, they find something they like to, to register, click on the program on the calendar page, and they can register right there. So Perfect. Nice and easy and simple. And, of course, the photo contest ongoing throughout the year. Yeah, Great. All year. Just like the picture you said turned up with the, yeah. the kid in the mud pit. Oh, right. Wasn't that right. fun? Yep. yep. So. Uh, yeah, it just makes you want to get in the mud, kind yeah. of. Yep. So, kind right. of. Yeah. Well, for kids, there is no question. Oh, yeah, there's, like there's no food. question. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it might cause a slight hesitation. Yeah. One other th quick thing sure. is we're out at the Miami County Fair um, all week. Monday is Kids' Day. 
but we have a booth in the conservation area, so if you have time, stop out there. We're going to have some Fall Farm Fest flyers and additional information. And that's going to be coming up so. soon, yeah. believe it or not. Or you know it. Know. Yeah. Can't yeah. wait. It's yes. always fun. Yes. yes, we love having you out there. <laughs> we'll try right. to, you have to choose your, the food um, truck that you'd like to be set up next to. Oh, fire pie? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's a good one. <laughs> anyway. They're all good. Yes. They really are. Yes. That's all right. Sure. So, but yes, yeah, so anyway. submit your photos, like us on Facebook, mm -hmm. uh, vote for your favorite photo. Um, and and look for them in the newspaper. Look for them in the newspaper because right. they are pretty cool, great pictures. Mm -hmm. All right. Hey, thank you so much for being here this morning. This has been Community Connection with the Miami County Park District. Scott Myers and Amanda Smith. I'm Clint Myers on 1071 WTJN for David DeNoyer on TCTV.